Hello, friend and colleague. It's Nikki from Full Voice Music on our podcast show, episode 191. My delightful guest is composer and voice teacher Nikki Phillips. Now, Nikki is the co creator of the Tweens and Teens songbook, and we're going to be sharing some highlights from this new musical theater resource. Exciting new music and vocal pedagogy right here on the Full Voice Podcast. Hello, my friend and colleague. Welcome to the Full Voice Podcast and Happy New Year. It's 2024. I hope your holidays, I hope your your Christmas and New Year's break was everything that you needed it to be. And I'm excited. I don't know about you, but I am excited. New Year's always bring in new inspiration, new ideas, new opportunities. And I hope you feel the same. Now, I will say, full disclosure, Getting back into working after the break was hard this year for me. Usually I'm pretty eager to uh, to get back to things, but this year was, was tough. <laughs> so if you're like me and you're just slowly, the gears are going and you're getting back into things, uh, I celebrate that because I'm right there with you. My friends, we have an amazing show with lots of fabulous teacher takeaways and we're going to be featuring some wonderful music. So I'm really excited about that. But before I bring Nikki on, I just wanted to mention some of the things happening at Full Voice Music. Uh, First and foremost, if professional development was on your to-do list for 2024, please check out the teacher training that we offer, and you can see all of our workshops and our online course uh, is now available. So please check out the teacher training tab on our website, fullvoicemusic.com. There is nothing more inspiring than getting some new information and having new ideas to bring back to your studio. And I have to tell you, I love I love that we don't need to get on a plane and spend lots of time traveling and money on a hotel. And I love that sometimes I can, I I might do a teacher training here and there and I'm in my pajamas and that's 100% okay. So if if you're looking for convenient and affordable teacher training, professional development, please check out our website. There's some wonderful upcoming courses coming up. And we always have new courses uh, throughout the year. So be sure to sign up for our newsletter so you can take advantage of, of those notifications. And we also do shower our newsletter people with love, with discounts and specials. So you don't want to miss out on that. Now, I do want to talk about a new feature that we're going to be doing this year. One of the questions, well, one of the many questions that we get uh, in our workshops often has to do with our resources and best practices for using our resources and how do our resources work with other resources. So we are going to be doing what we're calling a full voice live office hours. We're going to do one every month. And this is a free workshop slash webinar where we overview one of our products, but we also share teaching strategies. So we share a little bit of the behind the scenes, uh, how we researched them, who we researched them with, how we developed the product, and then best practices for how you can use it for both in-person lessons and online lessons. Many teachers, myself included, are teaching online. And actually my guest Nikki today is also a 100% online teacher. So If you haven't signed up for our newsletter, please visit our website and sign up um, and you will get notification to register for our live office hours. And fun fact, we will be having prizes. So if you attend one of our live office hours in person, you can win some of our products, some of our resources. So we're really excited. And full disclosure, I love seeing my friends and colleagues and I love talking to teachers and uh, I really do enjoy these uh, these types of presentations so 
I'm excited to see you. So Full Voice Live Office Hours in 2024. The first one coming up in February will be about the Songs and Studies for Kids series. And we'll be talking all about getting our little ones, helping them with pitch, helping them to uh, get started following a score, and how you can best use those resources in your studio. So, live office hours in February. Now, my friends, I am so excited, and I want to start off this, uh, this interview with my personal favorite song from the Tweens and Teens songbook. This is Julia, You're Fired. Well, I started out as a dog walker, and let me tell you. Thought I'd found my calling, thought I'd really found my groove. Till I walked a tiny pup who plain refused to move. When I picked her up, she started squirming all around. I called the owners, told them that I dropped her on the ground. Instead of being grateful that I'm so darn honest, my boss said, Julia, you're fired. So I went to Mickey D's and started serving fries Five gajillion calories in every super size Told my valued customers to cook at home instead And make some changes in their lives before they all drop dead Instead of being thankful that I'm frank and caring My boss said, Julia, you're fired Employers today are crazy, don't you agree? It has to be them that's wrong Cause I know that it's not me Interviewed for retail work and got it in a snap Soon I'm sorting clothing in the dressing room at Gap I gave my shoppers great advice when matching this and that And told them when their skinny jeans were making them look fat Instead of being pumped that I'm a fashionista My boss said, Julia, you're fired with mediocre people it's cause i need lots of dough so i can go traveling around europe with my iphone and my boyfriend which of course costs lots of money and my parents will not help me till i graduate from college but that's like a hundred million light years away i can't wait to see Peru, which is why i'm here to be the best barista you have ever seen. I can make a cappuccino brimming with caffeine. Show me how to make those cute designs inside the foam. I will never ever give you grounds to send me home. Cause I'm so sick and tired of hearing get out, pack up, you're done, you're fired, you're fired. Julia, you're fired. Am I hired? Welcome, welcome to the Full Voice Podcast and Happy New Year, Nikki Phillips. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited. Um, I uh, I have been listening to your music for uh, a few years now. I'm a huge fan. I'm excited because we're going to talk a little bit about your music today, but also we're going to talk a little bit about your teaching studio as well. But I want to start off, um, you have such uh, a diverse, a rich background in music and theater. And to start off, would you share with my listeners what the spark was for you in, in getting started in music and, and theater and, and everything that you do? Sure. I'd say the spark started when I was around three and I watched the movie musical Annie. Oh I literally gosh. became obsessed <laughs> so much so that. I just, all I wanted to do was watch the movie and my mom was so concerned. She like ended up talking to like my kindergarten teacher because she was like, <laughs> what do I do? This is not normal. Oh <laughs> like goodness. she was genuinely concerned with how much I was obsessed with this movie. But so my love for music and musical theater started there. Um, you know, I, I ended up, um, studying piano and clarinet and voice. Uh, and for the longest time, I, I thought I, my passion, uh, was to be an actor. And I, and I mm -hmm. went to theater school after, after high school. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
And then I realized things started shifting when I started to write um, musical theater. And then I realized that was my passion as well as teaching voice. So that's kind of where where I'm at. I'm a, I'm a composer. I, I write um, music for the theater and I also write music um, uh, for uh, right now. I'm writing music for an animated uh, television show. Oh, exciting. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and I also have a full-time voice studio. Um, so it's, um, I'm just loving that I get to do what I love to do. <laughs> oh, that, I, I, I mean, like so many of my guests, we wear all these hats and, and, but we do what we love. Oh, that's so beautiful. Now I'm going to do some name dropping here because I'm dying to know. You have been mentored, um, by industry greats, uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda and oh my gosh, Stephen Schwartz. Can you speak to those experiences and and how they shaped your your career? Yeah, sure. So um, I worked with Lynn when I did something called the Johnny Mercer Songwriters Project, mm. and that still uh, is a workshop that goes on, uh, and. They select 10 songwriters and they get to kind of work with um, these amazing oh mentors. My, and wow. I got to work with with Lynn for a week uh, and it was so incredible. Not only Lynn, but I got to work with Craig Carnelia. I'm not sure if you're familiar oh, yes. with, with his work. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, those types of opportunities are just life changing. Um, and Stephen Schwartz, I wouldn't say I was really mentored by him, mm -hmm. but um there's something called the Steven, the ASCAP Stephen Schwartz workshop. And what they do is they select musicals and Stephen listens to a, like a 20 minute sample of your musical and he gives feedback. Wow. Um, and he was so lovely and um, just really inspiring. And oh. uh, so it, it's been great. And I've also just been really lucky, um, you know, as a songwriter, I'm a part of a group called the BMI Musical Theater Workshop, which mm -hmm. is in New York City. And the workshop basically uh, trains the next generation of musical theater writers. And so wow. I've been a part of that. And and part of that workshop is they bring in all these amazing guests, <laughs> uh, like Stephen Sondheim, bless wow. him, um, was, the, you know, we got to hear him speak. Um, uh, just uh, Aaron's and Flaherty, like every musical theater kind of great who's mm -hmm. alive basically is, you know, drops in to, to help in with that workshop. So I've been really, really blessed to kind of just learn from all these amazing people. Oh, how inspired. I have goosebumps. I can't, I can't even imagine being in a room with these people, let alone sharing my, my work with them. How did that oh, feel? Oh, it's nerve wracking. Were you very like terrified? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yes, I was very, very nerve wracking. But, you know, I think that's kind of what we have to do as artists. You have to put yourself out there and, and what's, you know, for the most part, what's great about all the people that I presented my work to is that, they know how hard it is yeah. to write musical theater. Yeah. So for the most part, they're on your side and rooting for you and just wow. wanting to, you know, at the end of the day, and I always say this with my collaborators who I'm working with, at the end of the day, we just want it to be the best it can be. So if it's sure. not working, let's get the feedback and let's um, let's figure it out. You know that that's a great reminder. I I think that's one of the most vulnerable thing that we things that we have to do in this industry is just put ourselves out there, our work, our our voices, and and it, it takes a lot of courage to do that. But you're right. At the end of the day, you want to you want to have the best product, the best art that you possibly can. So that's that's so helpful. I I'm curious. Um, would you be willing to share like a a peek into like your creative process? So, uh, you you um, co wrote the uh, tweens and teens songbook with uh, you, uh, a lyricist Sarah Ziegler. Um, can can you tell us how you how you both worked together on that? I'm dying to know. Yeah, sure. Well, maybe I'll start by just explaining where the book came from, mm, and then I yes, can talk please. a little bit about our process. Yeah. So. Sarah and I met at the BMI Musical Theater Workshop, and part of um, what you have to do in second year in the workshop is you have to write a 20-minute musical. 
Um, mm-hmm. And so we were paired together or we chose each other to, to work on this together. And we were working on this show. Uh, it was actually uh, a musical based on Nancy Drew. Um, and long story short, after the workshop, we tried to get the rights. We thought we were close. Oh. And mm. at the end of the day, someone, you know, some little little writer named Alan Menken is uh, is now doing the Nancy Drew musical. Darn it. Oh. <laughs> but, you know, I think uh, I think uh, Alan Menken will, will do it justice. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> anyway, so we were working on this show, and one of the songs from it um, was uh, it called It's Just Not My Thing. And after the workshop, um, we started selling that sheet music online. And it kind of became our hit in terms of, wow, people are really um, gravitating towards this song. Um, and then we we kind of looked at each other and said, I feel like we need to expand on this idea so that there's a there's something missing in the the market for tweens and teens when it comes to musical theater. Um, you know, uh, Sarah is also a teacher and, you know, there's only so many times we can teach good girl Winnie Foster or, you know, um, Annie or, and, and I love those. I love those songs. I mean, they're, they're great songs. Um, but we just knew that there was, and there's lots of other songs out there for sure, but not a ton. So we decided to write this songbook and, you know, we were like, okay, we already have, it's just not my thing. Uh, and that was kind of our first song that we knew it was going to be in there. Um, and then the way Sarah and I work is we'll come up with an idea for a song, um, just a concept. Um, and then we will come up with the hook of the song together. Um, and then sometimes I will write music first. For example, I'll just write the first chorus idea uh, with with mel- with melody uh, as well. And Sarah will set lyrics to that. Uh, and we might go back and forth so that Sarah then would write the bridge lyrics. Um, so it kind of depends on the scenario. Um, Sarah is a lyricist who really likes to have music first. Um, so I try, of course, to be accommodating. I, of course, am someone sometimes who likes lyrics first. <laughs> so it's finding that finding that balance depending on the song. Um, so we kind of work back and forth that way in the creation of it. I I'm gonna I I love that I can ask this question because you're a voice teacher. So we all know how challenging it is to work with this age group in the voice studio. We know they're going through so much stuff. We know their voices are changing. We know that they had a fight with their mom before they showed up on our Zoom window. Is it challenging to write and compose for this age group? Um, I wouldn't say it's challenging. I mean, we're very... I'm very aware of kind of vocal ranges. We never wanted songs to be um, crazy high, like crazy belting, just because we know that a lot of young singers aren't able to get there yet and are still working on that. Um, So, I mean, the majority of our songs don't go above like a C, above middle C. Right. Um, also very aware of kind of the low notes too. <laughs> um, so, you know, that, that was a, a big part in, in the writing of it. Um, but in terms of, you know, being difficult for the age group, we were all, um, we also were very aware that we didn't want to dumb down to the age group. Um, you know, the music, our songs, you know, are, some of them are, are are challenging. Some are simpler. Um, and, you know, that was intentional. Uh, you know, we, we wanted something that could be a challenge for people, but uh, for, sorry, for, for young singers, but also where they felt that they could resonate um, with these songs as well. I think you've done a beautiful job with that, oh, and you. and I, as a as a person that that works with younger singers, I think that 
there, there's a lot of consideration that's gone into the project. And you can, you can see that. You can see that when you start working with it and when you listen to the recordings, like there's just so much there. Um, did you... Uh, did you maybe workshop some of the songs with any of your students, like during the process? Did you bring ideas to them or did you try it with any of your students or did you just show them the finished product to go, hey, sing this song? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I didn't work. I didn't workshop it with my students, but a couple of, of the songs were workshopped at the BMI Musical Theater Workshop because um, you bring songs in uh, and you get feedback. Um but besides that, I mean, what's interesting is half of the songs are actually from a musical that Sarah and I uh, co-wrote with um, uh, a book writer named Stephen Gallagher. Uh, and that musical is called In Between. So half of those songs, we actually were able to, during the pandemic, workshop this new musical um, online <laughs> with, with, young, with young singers. So what was great was we... Before the songbook was even published, half of those songs we heard young people sing. Um, so that was a lovely blessing. Um, and the and the other half, I mean, to be honest, we just were working back and forth with each other. Um, uh, and it was just kind of new, new to the world beyond that. When you were starting to workshop when you were doing the musical, did it you hadn't written all of the music yet. Did that kind of continue your, your passion for the project where you're like, Oh yes, this is people are, we're getting great results. This sounds great. Did you continue from that? Um, definitely. I mean, I think, um, hearing all these young kids, um, sing our songs just kind of reinforced, um, that the songbook needs to be out there. <laughs> um, and yeah, so it was a nice kind of segue being able to take, um, you know, five of these songs from our show and put it in the songbook. Um, and, and then what was also great is we were able to kind of see what was missing from the songbook. You know, we wanted to make sure that there was a lot of variation um, in the songs so that, you know, we didn't have all songs that were just for, teenagers or all songs just for preteens or too many ballads or too many uptempos or too many comedy songs or too many, you know, we wanted to make sure that we were kind of, um, yeah, covering as much as we could with, with 10 songs. Wow. I, I, well, I think you've done such a beautiful job. Uh, I wanted to ask you, um, moving into your, your private studio, uh, which is all online, you teach 100% online. Can you tell us a little bit about your teaching studio? Yeah, sure. Well, I work with um, tweens, teens, and adults. Right. Uh, I work with singers who are just starting out, but I also work with singers who are professionals as well. Uh, and I love working with uh, with those two groups. Uh, I just love it. Uh, I also work with a lot of teens who have a passion for musical theater who want to pursue that. Uh, literally, I have students right now who are in the throes of auditioning for, you know, NYU musical theater program and Michigan and all the all the big ones. And they're they're there right now doing that this week uh, and over the next couple uh, over the next month. Um, so that's a big passion of mine. Um, you know, my studio is completely online. Um, what else can I tell you about my studio? Well, we, I have a lot of I have a lot of listeners that uh, are either teaching online or are thinking of teaching online. Uh, give us a little uh, insight to your setup. I would love to know what you. Oh, use. sure, sure. So my current setup is um, well, the mic I'm using using is a Shure SM7B mic. It's plugged into an audio interface. That audio interface is the SSL2 Plus. Um, I have a I think Roland. we have the same gear. <laughs> oh, do you? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. I have a digital keyboard that's plugged in uh, to the interface. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of a webcam, I actually just started using uh, a mirrorless uh, camera called the Sony ZV-10, or is it an EZ-10? One of those. Okay. I'm trying to see if I can find it. Um, just to kind of get 
up my uh, my picture quality. Sure. Uh, and then I have an Elgato Mini Light uh, for lighting. Nice. And do you use uh, what platform do you use when you're teaching? I use Zoom right now. Nice. Uh, but I have explored absolutely every program there is. I'm on the fence of whether to go with Farplay. Um, uh, but right now, Zoom is still working for me. So I haven't made that shift. <laughs> I want to thank you for sharing that because I have done the same thing in my teaching studio. I have been looking at other things, but I just keep coming back to Zoom. It just, it just It's working and my students are thriving. And I know this is where some teachers can get stuck with so many choices and options. And, and I, I appreciate that you, uh, you could give us a, like a little oversight of what you do. Um, with the with your voice studio, how how does your uh, your work with uh, comp- composing and working with musical theater shows how does that uh, impact your teaching? It definitely impacts my teaching. Um, you know, I I think I have maybe a little bit of a different um, understanding of. Uh, a song in terms of coming from a writer's perspective. So a lot of the times when I work with my students, you know, we'll look at a piece and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll comment on how the music is um, supporting the lyric or why did this come, why did this composer make this choice? Why do, do the dynamics say piano? What's going on emotionally in the char- for the character uh, for, you know, the dynamics to be that way? You know, I, I'm, I always communicate with my students spe- because I know firsthand everything is intentional on that page. Every note, every word. Um, so you have to, first of all, really respect that uh, and also use it as a guide. You know, a lot of what singers are trying to achieve in terms of of performance is on the page like all the, the music even the sheet music um you know a lot of a lot of those little hints <laughs> um a lot of people ignore uh just in ter- even just dynamics or articulations or or anything um and that is literally the composer telling you what their intention is and I like to make sure that my singers are aware of that. Oh, such a great takeaway. Do you do you have students in your in your roster that are also interested in composing or are you mentoring future composers by chance? You know what I I don't. I've had a couple of students in the past who have been interested and we've done a little bit Actually, that's not true. I have one new student who who is interested in composing, not musical theater. He's interested in in, in writing uh, more more pop music. Um, who I'm who I'm going to be doing a little bit of work with. Uh, but the, to be honest, the majority of people um, are are just there for voice lessons. Ah, oh, great. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, when you're when you're working with your students. Um, and and you're doing like musical theater how how would you structure a lesson are you working like vocal production um artistry acting how do you put all of that together for your students sure well before we kind of work on any performance uh of the song uh we really just work on it from a technical standpoint making sure that technically everything's being covered you know um is this person trying to um uh is belting in an incorrect way is this person should this person be using more of a head dominant mix here uh you know going going through the song and or addressing breathing breath support all those things making sure everything's kind of covered from that angle and then when that's covered i say Okay, now forget about it. <laughs> don't focus on it. <laughs> right. Don't yeah, don't don't be in your head about those things. And then we we um go at it um from, you know, a character perspective and we talk about, you know, what's what's the song about? What is hap- what's the moment before? Is um 
where does this character start in the beginning of the song? Where does the character end? Uh, we'll work a lot on kind of conveying that emotion um, through uh, the singer's eyes. You know, a lot of the times I'll work with singers who have the most gorgeous voices, but there's it's just not translating through the face. Um, so kind of just working on that, you know, a lot of the times and I think my students absolutely hate this exercise and I don't blame them, but, but getting, getting this, the singer to speak the song as a monologue, uh, which I get it. Most, I, pro I probably hated doing that too. Um, but it's so valuable. Um, and also just, you know, what they're physically doing with their body. Sometimes singers, um, are too still. <laughs> Sometimes singers just are moving too much and it's finding that balance, um, uh, you know, especially if this song is for an audition, you know, where where are you looking? What's your eye line? You know, what are you doing with your hands? Should you be using your hands? You know, all, all of these kinds of things come into play. Oh, so good. I, I, I wanted to let my listeners know, and I know that they are going to be absolutely excited to hear this, but you have been working on the tweens and teens volume two and and Nikki has been generous um, we're gonna we're gonna feature we're gonna feature one of the songs that it's coming up in the new book so thank you for allowing to, us to do this so one of my favorites uh, Nikki and I have been talking via Facebook and messaging back and forth my all-time favorite off of the the tweens and teens volume one is Julia you're fired I just that I've listened to that a hundred times and I've probably made all my <laughs> students listen to it I made my husband listen to it everybody on the full voice team has heard it and we laughed and laughed and laughed. Um, I would love for you to set up Julia for justice, please. <laughs> yeah. Well, so we when we were thinking of doing uh, volume two, I said, we have to do another Julia song because Julia um, is such... A funny character. She's just oblivious Agreed. to like, <laughs> life. Um, harmless, but oblivious. Uh, and I was like, we have to, you know, we decided we we need to do this continuation. So we decided that Julia is running uh, for school president. Uh, <laughs> and she's kind of giving her school uh, speech. Um and trying to prove to the student body why they should vote for her. Um, of course, all the reasons why they should vote for her are <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, and again, she's oblivious, you know, so towards the end, you know, it, it isn't a, a welcoming uh, atmosphere um, in, in the kind of auditorium <laughs> of this, of this uh, school um, event, uh, and she gets, uh, you know, kind of basically thrown off the stage at the end, but, uh, <laughs> it's just another, another part of Julia's journey. <laughs> On the eve of our student body presidential election, I beg you to lend me your ear. I stand before you now as a beacon of hope. Let me tell you why I'm here. I'm not here for my college application. And no, I'm not here for the fame. I'm here because I care the most for our school. I know you all know my name. I am Julia. I stand for justice, Julia for justice. I am here for you. I am Julia. I fight for freedom, Julia for freedom. Here's what I will do. I'll strive for burgers made with vegan meat, a toilet with a heated seat, a hot tub and a swimming pool, and teachers who dress really cool. The right to use our phones in class, the guarantee that we'll all pass, and purifiers for our air. Because we're human, and it's only fair. I am Julia. I'll be your leader, let me lead you. You'll have no regret. May I remind you that I am Julia, Julia for justice. Don't you dare forget. Let me tell you a little bit more about who Julia is, where she comes from, and why she's so freaking passionate about justice for this student body. Well, I've had a lot of summer jobs. Sadly, they 
were all very short-lived. But it was never my fault. It was the imbeciles in power who were corrupt and blind. With no respect for my vision or my mind. Yes, it was tough, but it made me see the person in power should have been me. I'll be powerful if you elect me. Viva Julia, be my biggest fan. Don't vote for Amber. Her name is Amber, it's a color. Here's my awesome plan. I'll see that every class is study hall. The gym is turned into a mall. The classrooms have the right feng shui and every day's a holiday. And we can use a robot guy to write our essays on the fly, but never with an ugly font because I'm Julia. And it's what I want. I am Julia. Ow, watch it. I stand for Julia. Are those tomatoes? I am here for you. Stop throwing fruit. I am Julia. I'll be your leader, Principal Myers. Can't you stop this pill? You know, you're all like my former employers. Nearsighted and small. I am Julia. I can't be stopped. I was born to be your president. Elect me and you'll see. Julia for justice. So vote for me. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm just, I'm challenging you here. For volume three, where do you see, where do you see Julia? <gasps> oh my gosh. Well, I feel like, well, I don't know. Maybe... I don't know where Julia would be. Oh, maybe, maybe Julia's taking a gap year and doesn't end up going to school. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. Okay. I'm going to hold you to that. Tell Sarah. Okay. Tell Sarah. That's my request. I love it. Oh okay. my goodness. Um, aside from the, uh, tweens and teens project, which I hope that you'll continue putting those out because I do feel there is such a gap for that demographic of singers and, and what a gift you've given them. Oh, but aside from that project, mm -hmm. what's some of your favorite projects that you've worked on? Well, I'm, I'm currently working on a project called A Ray of Light. Uh, and that musical is based on the writers of Curious George. The writers <gasps> of Curious the writers oh. of Curious George um were Jewish. They lived in Germany uh, and in 1939 um they had to flee uh, along with the millions that needed to. Uh and the only thing that they had with them basically were a few belongings and the Curious George manuscript and they fled on bicycle. Wow. And they fled to America. So this show is about their journey and how wow. they brought Curious George um, to the States. So that's been a passion project of mine. It's, you know, been seven years in the making mm. <laughs> um, as musicals uh, can take. Um, so that's uh, that's kind of a, a favorite of mine. I've also written a, a musical, a three-hander musical called The Last Party. Um, and uh, yeah, I have, a, I have a couple other uh, projects as, as well, but, um, you know, the work never stops. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm so excited. I can't wait to, uh, to, uh, be able to share your, your upcoming work. Um, I, I wanted to know, how do you see, how do you see musical theater, the landscape of musical theater evolving and, and what role would you like to be in that? That's a big question. Yeah. How do I see musical theater evolving? Um, I think, well, for example, you know, I just saw, I think it's evolving in that it's very much about diversity and inclusion. You know, I just saw a show on Broadway called How to Dance in Ohio, which was about seven autistic um, young people uh, and their journey. Um, so seeing that, um, I feel like that's where kind of things are, are shifting to, f to create stories, um, that people can relate to. Um, I feel like I want to be part of 
um, the change that's happening in musical theater in not only what's on the stage in terms of the shows that are being represented, but behind the scenes too, where people of color, women, um, all the underrepresented um, creators, creatives, um, not only creators, but creatives um, are being asked to the table um, because, you know, for the longest time, it's it's been very male dominated. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'd I'd love to be a part of it um, as as a woman, as a Jewish woman, as a gay woman, <laughs> uh, to be able to tell stories from that perspective. Wow. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, do you have any, do you have any advice for young composers or young artists just getting started? I mean, you're doing brave, brave things. What would you, what would you do to encourage them? What would you say to encourage them? My advice would be to really get a strong foundation of musical theater in its heyday, like the golden age um, of musical theater and how those shows were written, how those songs were structured. Not to say that you need to structure the songs that you're writing now that way, but I always, I'm a strong believer, you need to know the rules before you break them. Um, and there are a lot of kind of rules in musical theater. So that would be my one thing is, is really really study that and, you know, and learn, um, learn about how those greats created those shows and, 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 and structurally what's happening. Um, my other advice would be just to, just to put it out there. You know, it's, it's so, um, and I'm, and I get it because I, you know, have these doubts all the time too of like, oh, should, you know, does this show belong? You know, what's going to happen to it? And you just have to kind of keep going. And I'm, I'm a strong believer that there's only one you, uh, there's only your voice is important. Uh, and I think it's easy to get lost in that and forget that it's important because it seems like everyone else's voices are more important or, you know, are, or more, more talented or more this or that, but, uh, you know, um, there's only one you. So, so, so use it and, and share that with the world. Oh, thank you so, so much. I'm, I have goosebumps. Thank you. <laughs> I, um, I wanted to ask one, one final question and Nikki, thank you so much for this conversation and, oh, yeah, uh, my and for your beautiful music. Thank you for putting your music out there for oh, all of thank us. You. Well, thank you for listening. <laughs> and, uh, if you had to choose your favorite song off of tweens and teens. Um, what, what is it? And can you give us a little backstory of the creative process behind it? Oof. I feel like it's like a three-way tie. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Then I want to hear all three. I want to hear the whole story. Okay. Well, I will say it's just not my thing holds a very special place in my heart and in Sarah's because that's the song that really started it all. I took piano lessons almost for a year. Suddenly I had ten thumbs. I hit the keys like they were drums. I wasn't any good, but whatever. It's just not my thing. Thought it looked like fun I didn't earn a single belt Just the most gigantic welt I never broke a board Ugh, karate Also not my thing My mom says stick with it, Lucy Just keep trying
Can you blame me? It's so not my thing. My mom says life's for the taking. Look at Chelsea. That could be you. I know I'm supposed to step it up and be something too. I should be a singing orphan. I should have a winning serve. I should be a virtuoso I should break the math test curve I should have an online business I should really take up tap I should head a cool committee I should write a rockin' rap boop, boop, chip, boop. Just one of the above So I could stand out from the crowd So mom could brag to all her friends Because I made her proud I wish I were at Wish I ruled at math I'd like to shine up on a stage Or be a genius for my age I'm sorry mom I guess I don't have a thing Because that's the song that really started it all um, so that, that means a lot. Um, I also love Julia, you're fired. I just think it's just so fun. Um, and I, I love writing, writing songs like that. Um, but the third song that I is very different and, and that song is called Dino Kid. Oh, and in yes. that, and in that song, um, it's really about, you know, a person who's, accepted their themselves for who they are mm -hmm. uh mm. and i feel like a lot of kids growing up are dealing with that i i know i dealt with that not even in my as a kid but as an adult trying to come to terms with that um so writing a song that reflects that meant a lot to me um because i can relate <laughs> As a, as a, as an adult, I can relate. Um, so I, I would say those, those three are kind of my, my top, but you know, you can't, you can't pick your favorite child, right? That would, be, <laughs> that would just be wrong. I love all of them, of course. Oh, On the day that I turn nine, I cut off my girly hair. Some people stared and I was ashamed till I vowed I wouldn't care. Now I don't mind what others think, let them swim in seas of pink. I feel great and black and green, I look tough but I'm not mean. I'm the Dino Kid, stellar like a stegosaurus. The Dino Kid, hungry as a carnotaurus. I'm weird and I am strong. I am fierce and I belong. I'm ready to announce I like myself, and that's what really counts. I remember how it felt, always being on my guard. I was so lost. And tired of trying, faking was way too hard. I am at my very best when I give my shield a rest. Now I don't hide behind my hide, come right in and look inside. I'm the Dino Kid, I am proudly prehistoric. The Dino Kid, puzzles make me feel euphoric. I am fun. to behold Cause different is fun Variety's great If we were the same then things would be boring So rock your own style and stand up real straight Let the whole world hear us roaring I'm the Dino Kid, mighty as the brunt 
Brontosaurus, the Dino Kid. Listen and adopt my chorus. I am weird and I am strong. I am fierce and I belong. And when it comes to you, those kids will like you too. Cause you are bold and you are Just the way you are. Ah, uh, Nikki, thank you so much. Uh, where can people find and follow you so they can learn about all the upcoming new songs? Yeah, you can check out my website, NikkiPhillips.com. Um, and there there's a tab where you can hit songbook. So you can you can check out uh you can purchase the songbook there, you can listen to all the songs. Um you know, I also have a, a music tab with all, all my other music as well. So there's there's not only um, the tweens and teens uh, sheet music on there, but there's there's other work as well for adults. <laughs> um, so you can check it out there. You can also buy the book on Amazon. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm going to put links to all of Nikki's material, uh, including the website and where you can get the tweens and teens. And Nikki, will you come back when uh, volume two is ready and we can talk about your your favorite children from that, that book? Can we talk about <laughs> I would. That? Yeah, of course. I'd love to. Thank awesome. you. Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. A very special thank you to Nikki Phillips for that wonderful interview and for sharing her beautiful music. Shout out to Sarah Ziegler, her co-writer. I want to make sure that you know that all of the information to find and follow Nikki and to find the Tweens and Teens songbook is in the show notes. Please check that out. Now, I also want to let everybody know, you want to go to our YouTube channel, Full Voice Music. Our song lyrics are there, and our new feature that's coming up this year, the Full Voice Live Office Hours, is going to be posted there. So if you cannot attend our Live Office Hours live, you can watch the replay on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe. As always, my friend, I am wishing you a beautiful day, inspired teaching, and happy singing. Bye.